Chapter Twenty of The Flying Saucers Are Real. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Flying Saucers Are Real by Donald Kehoe. Chapter Twenty. After one year's investigation of the flying saucers and Air Force operations, I have come to the following conclusions. One. The Air Force was puzzled and badly worried when the disks were first sighted in 1947. 2. The Air Force began to suspect the truth soon after Mantell's death, perhaps even before. 3. Project Saucer was set up to investigate and at the time conceal from the public the truth about the saucers. 4. During the spring of 1949, this policy, which had been strictly maintained by Forrestal, underwent an abrupt change. On top-level orders, it was decided to let the facts gradually leak out in order to prepare the American people. 5. This was the reason for the April 27, 1949 report, with its suggestions about space visitors. 6. While I was preparing the article for the January 1950 issue of True, it had been considered in line with the general education program. But the unexpected public reaction was mistaken by the Air Force for hysteria, resulting in their hasty denial that the saucers existed. 7. Because the Air Force feared any closer analysis of the Mantell case, Major Boggs was instructed to publicize the Venus explanation. Although it had been denied, the Air Force knew that most people had forgotten this or had never known it. 8. Major Boggs, having stated this answer publicly, along with the other Chiles Witted and Gorman answers, was forced to stick to it, though he knew it was wrong and that the case summaries would prove it. 9. The case summaries were released to a small number of Washington newsmen to continue planting the space travel thought, this decision being made after True's reception proved to the Air Force that the public was better prepared than had been thought. In regard to the flying saucers themselves, I believe that in the majority of cases spaceships are the answer. 1. The Earth has been under periodic observation from another planet, or other planets, for at least two centuries. 2. This observation suddenly increased in 1947, following the series of A-bomb explosions begun in 1945. 3. The observation, now intermittent, is part of a long-range survey and will continue indefinitely. No immediate attempt to contact the Earth seems evident. There may be some unknown block to making contact, but it is more probable that the spaceman's plans are not complete. I believe that the Air Force is still investigating the saucer sightings, either through the Air Materiel Command or some other headquarters. It is possible that some Air Force officials still fear a panic when the truth is officially revealed. In that case, we may continue for a long time to see routine denials, alternating with new suggestions of interplanetary travel. The education problem is complicated by two imperative needs. We must try to learn as much as we can about the spaceship's source of power, and at the same time, try to prevent clues to this information from reaching an enemy on Earth. If censorship is suddenly imposed on all flying saucer reports, this would be the chief reason. This would also help solve a minor problem where partial censorship now exists. A few test missiles launched from a southwest base have been seen by citizens at a distance from the proving grounds. In some cases, their reports have got into local papers, though the wire services did not carry them. 
These missile tests are peculiarly different from the general run of flying saucer reports. Contrasted with the Chiles Witted, Mantell, and other spaceship sightings, they stand out with a certain pattern, easy to recognize. News or radio reports of these tests might accidentally give an enemy clues to the type, speed, and range of this particular missile, once he learned the pattern. Periodic censorship, or even a complete blackout of sighting reports, may be enforced during the next year or so. For the purposes mentioned, such action would be justified. But whenever such censorship is lifted, the complete truth about space visitors should be told at the same time. The full details of all the major cases, the size of the Godman Field spaceship, any attempted landings or other efforts at contact by interplanetary visitors, and all other details that now are official secrets. I also believe that a certain group of disk sightings in this country is linked with our guided missiles. Official announcements, of course, may be delayed a long time. With this exception, I believe that Americans should be told the truth, now. When the announcement of our guided missiles is made, some Americans not familiar with the facts may accept it as a full answer. If officials are not yet ready to reveal the space travel facts, the Mantell evidence and other key cases may be deliberately glossed over. But even if all the evidence, the worldwide sightings, the old records, the Chiles Witted and other cases, should be completely ignored, Americans cannot escape eventual contact with dwellers on other planets. Even though space visitors never attempt contact with us, sooner or later Earthlings will be traveling to distant planets, planets that scientists have said are almost surely inhabited. The American people have proved their ability to take incredible things. We have survived the stunning impact of the atomic age. We should be able to take the interplanetary age, when it comes, without hysteria. End of chapter 20 End of The Flying Saucers Are Real by Donald Kehoe This recording by Roger Moline